Hello and welcome to Hamamatsu's new Tech Bite series. Over the next few weeks, I'll be interviewing our UK sales engineers to get an insight into new products from Hamamatsu and how our technologies are being used across a range of application areas. We hope you find the series useful and informative. And as always, if you have any questions, please contact your local Hamamatsu office. Today, I have Kevin with me, who will be telling us how our mini spectrometers can be used in medical applications. Why don't you start off by telling us a bit about the technologies you're going to be discussing. So today I'm going to be discussing some of Hamamatsu's mini and micro spectrometers. For those that might not be too familiar with spectrometers, they essentially allow us to measure the spectra coming from either a light source or an object. When light is incident on it, it passes through an input slit and then typically through one or more lenses. The spectrometer then splits the light into all the different wavelengths. This is the spectra using either a grating or a prism. Each wavelength will then fall on a sensor in turn, which allows us to know the exact makeup of light that we had. This can then tell us information about where the light came from through a few different methods of analysis. So where does the mini and micro come into this? So what I just ran through is the basic makeup of a spectrometer. Now these tend to be benchtop systems with moving parts that take up a lot of space and need to be used in a lab. The Hamamatsu mini spectrometers, no surprise, are much smaller than this and are able to fit in the palm of your hand. We use specially designed Hamamatsu image sensors, coupled with nano imprinted gratings and lenses to reduce the size of our spectrometers. The gratings we use are known as polychromators and essentially allow us to measure all the different wavelengths simultaneously, instead of one at a time. We also try and use the optimal optical design to reduce the dead space in the spectrometers even more. In recent years, we've pushed the miniaturization even further to create microspectrometers. These are fingertip sized devices that operate using a special structure. Instead of having separate lenses and gratings, they use a special concave blazed grating that combines all these to focus, split and direct the light onto the right point in the image sensor. The image sensor even contains the input window to allow the size to be reduced even further. Does this miniaturization have many effects on the performance of the spectrometer? So naturally, this change in size comes with a cost. By combining a lens, grating and mirror into one component, each aspect does not have the same performance as an entirely separate part. However, we've managed to maintain high sensitivity across a wide spectral response range while reducing the impact on resolution to a minimum. Maintaining this high resolution is very important as it allows two separate wavelengths very close together to be individually identified, allowing detailed analysis of the spectra to be done. What advantages does this small size bring? There are many advantages to the small size, such as generally lower power requirements and of course portability. This opens up a world of opportunity, especially in markets like medicine and medical diagnostics. This small size could allow tests that usually require samples to be sent away to a lab to now be performed at the point of care. While that isn't always as simple as just replacing whatever the current technology is with a mini spectrometer, it is a sign of what this reduction in size can provide to this industry. One example is PCR, or polyamorase chain reaction. Now this is used in many diagnostic processes and typically requires a PMT or similar to be used in the lab. However, it now could be possible to use a microspectrometer for this and thus cut down the time taken between taking a sample from a patient and getting the results back. Can you tell me a bit more about PCR and how the spectrometer would replace the current technology? In PCR, the first step is to obtain a sample from the patient. This is usually done by swabbing the patient's mouth, nose or throat. This sample is then sent away to laboratory. The basis behind PCR is that every virus can be identified by a specific characteristic section of its genetic material. The genetic material from the smear has to be multiplied in order for there to be sufficient material to determine whether a pathogen is present or not. Using devices known as thermocyclers, the chain reaction is started and the DNA is amplified exponentially. If a virus is present in the sample, it will also multiply and therefore be detected. If there is no virus, it will not be multiplied and therefore not be detected. Using a fluorescent dye, 
The amplification of the pathogen genome can be monitored in real time. This is typically done by a PMT as they can detect very low light levels. This is called real-time PCR, despite it usually taking several days before the patient receives their test results. The main cause of the time in this process is the time taken to send the sample to the laboratory, the test itself to be taken, and then to be returned. The test itself only takes up to five hours. It may be possible to alter this process slightly to allow the de a detector, such as a spectrometer, to analyse the fluorescence. The high sensitivity of our microspectrometers would allow them to detect the spectra of fluorescence. However, the signal would still need to be stronger than in current methods. Using a spectrometer, especially a portable spectrometer, would allow PCR to be performed at the point of care and could drastically reduce the overall time taken for the test.